Hey, Leon, I just heard some new information right now I want to share with you from Homeland Security out of Prince George's County, Maryland. Right now, ATF agents are searching for a man they saw on videotape here at these apartment complexes who was near the car and questioned. They're, they're not considering him a suspect right now. They just say they want to talk with this man because he was the last man seen near this car. Let me show you what's going on. A lot of noise over here because you have ambulances to my left. Over here, this is the apartment complex we're talking about. You won't be able to see much other than the fire department over here because in between those two buildings over there, that's where the parking garage is. And where this car fire happened was three levels below all of this. Uh, Homeland Security also is saying that there was some sort of device about the size of a clipboard that was left next to this car three floors below that exploded, caught the car on fire and caused yet another explosion. Battling hot spots right now. Our Natasha Barrett is live on the scene. She joins us with the very latest. Natasha. Hey guys, this really is a massive fire, was a massive fire, and the hard part about it for even firefighters or even neighbors out here watching is that these were people's You can see through the smoke and where firefighters are working, two homes burned to the ground. There's a third one to the right of it, and really the vantage point you're getting, you can only see the shell of the front of that home. Beyond the windows, neighbors say there's really nothing left. This happened around 3.30. We're off of Tillett Loop here in the city of Manassas and Prince William County, and a lot of people really are just shocked. They say they, they heard commotion on their street. They ran to look. Several people called 911. There were people inside some of these houses, families inside some of these houses, but what we're hearing, thank goodness, is that everybody got out okay. Um, from what we know right now, no injuries. That's good to see, but it's astonishing to see the damage. One veteran firefighter out here from Manassas and Prince William County said he's never seen homes go up just, just that fast and just be burned down that quickly. Also, because it's in the middle of the day, there's tons of people out here, but at this point, they really can't determine and figure out, because it's so soon, what caused this fire. But so many people standing around right now just watching, really in amazement, because two peoples, if not three, like the one I pointed out over here, are gone. Three families without a home now. Leon, well, this is why people aren't happy. Take a look over here. Underneath all this snow, it looks like a mound of snow, right? Well, there's an SUV parked here. We're on 37th Street Northwest over in Glover Park. Coming further down here, yet another one just covered by snow and ice. I think it's been here since probably Saturday. Neighbors have complained nothing's been done. You can see 37th Street still pretty clear. Cars can get through, but take a look at this. What I'm about to show you, this is why people are upset. Pick any side street in Glover Park, you'll find them. People not just frustrated, they're angry. The plow comes through here, okay? He gets stuck right here. I said, where the hell are you going? He blocked me off again. Jim Matagas' car has been stuck in the snow for days. It took several digs and injuries to get out. I am blistered all over. Neighbors say a snowplow drove through Hudacopa Street Northwest, but that was it. I just saw a plow run through, but actually right before you guys came, and um, I don't know, they, he wasn't even down, he didn't even touch anything. This is the second time Alyssa Martin dug her car out. Down the street, a carpet cleaning business brought fans to dry out a flooded floor from a roof leak. This stuff is going to melt, it has to go it's going somewhere. It has to go somewhere. 1996 was my busiest year ever. This might top. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing, not even snow, will stop a balloon delivery. These men decided to do the heavy lifting all by themselves. How sore are you at this point? <laughs> I don't know. I could use a back rub for sure. <laughs> I think everyone's looking for a massage at this point. Everybody's waking up sore. You're taking a look at more cars snowed in here on 37th Street Northwest. I talked to D.C. City officials. This is what they had to say. They say, you know, they just don't have a lot of manpower to go around. This is a big city. It's a big problem. They're trying their best. But here's the other thing. There's all this snow. If you pick it up, where are you going to put it? Live from Northwest D.C., Natasha Barrett, ABC 7 News. Thanks. Maureen, it looks like bad record keeping may be to blame. That's what defense officials are telling me right now. The other part of this, we know that part of the problem came to light when a woman came here to Arlington Cemetery to honor her husband. She thought she was coming to her husband's grave.
It's considered the highest honor for a veteran to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery among men and women who gave their life for their country. It sounds terrible. But hundreds of our nation's fallen service members are unaccounted for. 211 graves are misidentified or misplaced. Army officials say they can't be sure just who is buried in some of the graves. It's disgraceful to think that our uh, that our nation's soldiers are being moved without the without the knowledge. It wasn't until a woman visiting her husband's grave noticed something wasn't right. She said someone else's headstone was placed on her husband's grave. Turns out cremated remains were buried at a gravesite already in use. This should not be going be going on. They should have been more, you know, observant of how things are handled. I mean, that's Arlington Cemetery for crying out loud. Records of grave sites are still kept in paper files, not on a computer. In some cases, they say a grave marker wasn't placed soon enough after burial or records weren't kept updated, leading to the mystery of who is actually buried in many grave sites. Defense officials say problems with management are also to blame. The Army forced out the cemetery's two civilian leaders and appointed a new chief. This sort of thing shouldn't happen. It shouldn't have never have happened. It should never happen again. Those two top civilian leaders here at Arlington Cemetery are now officially out. They've been pushed out by defense officials. A new position has been created here to oversee what goes on here at Arlington Cemetery. I also want to mention what the top superintendent, the former top superintendent, had to say today to a military newspaper. When asked about what was going on here, the charges against him, he said, mistakes are made. Live from Arlington Cemetery, Natasha Barrett, ABC 7 News. Caroline, a local pastor in D.C. says he just wants to help people, but he says he's being punished by the city with a rarely used law. It used to be an apartment complex until a fire gutted this southeast D.C. building on Alabama Avenue. Now it's supposed to become an outreach center for people living with HIV in D.C. Seems like a good thing, you know, something that would definitely help people out in this area. Then this bill came from D.C.'s tax office, more than $149,000 for property taxes. Just outrageous. I mean, just shocked, surprised. The new Macedonia Baptist Church owns the property, but its pastor says he's still raising money to open the outreach center and can't pay the tax. Churches are exempt from paying property taxes, but D.C.'s Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs says since the building is empty, it gets charged. $149,000 was due Wednesday. The church just bought the building for $600,000 in February, but because the tax bill isn't paid, the city of D.C. won't do business with the church. If I had the revenues and the resources, which we are, we want to begin um, renovating, I I can't so you're kind of stuck. Exactly. The pastor says he applied for an exemption and the city inspected the building, but he says he's still getting the runaround from D.C. city officials. How could this possibly be? I really think that they should get some, some type of help. The phone with the deputy director of the DCRA. After we asked him several questions about this, he says he'll give the church the exemption it wants. In other words, the church should not have to pay that $149,000. Report ABC 7 News. Right. Hey, Leon, we'll talk about being at the right place at the right time. This baby boy was supposed to be born on Monday, but apparently he had other plans. Instead, this boy came out into the world right here in this driveway of the fire station at 3 a.m. this morning. Right when I went to get in the car, actually, my water broke. The Presleys from Montgomery Village were driving to the hospital early this morning. Then they had to make a quick detour. And I knew that we weren't going to make it because I could feel that I had to push. I said, this baby's coming now. We need to pull over. Turns out the Gaithersburg Volunteer Fire Department was at the corner. Christian Presley says he parked the car, rang the doorbell, but nobody answered. So he called 911. She was the one that stayed calm and said, let's turn pull into the fire department here. Uh, because I was like, are you serious? We don't have the baby here in a parking lot. I'm thinking this is not how it's supposed to happen. I mean, like you see sitcoms and that's what happens in sitcoms. But anyone who has kids go, that's not really how you have a baby. Firefighter Michael Skidmore woke up and delivered the baby. I'm thinking, uh, OK, do I have to do it right here? But unfortunately, you know, we do. So uh, that's the nature of our business. But the best part of the day may have been when the Presley's other three kids, ages seven, four and two, met their baby brother for the very first time. Look at your baby brother. Hey, JC, look. A baby. A baby. 
It was such a good moment to be a part of. Baby boy, mom, all okay. Parents tonight are still working on the perfect name for that baby boy. Live from Gaithersburg, Natasha Barrett, ABC 7 News. Oh. Maureen, everybody's talking about this guy, Strasburg, even members of Congress today on Capitol Hill, and it seems everybody's trying to cash in on this guy. You won't believe what people are willing to pay. Four years at $15.1 million, Steven Strasburg is doing well, but all the buzz surrounding this powerful rookie might soon pay for itself. I've seen our tickets go over a couple hundred, some of them, thousand maybe. Game tickets are selling like never before. Strasburg brought 24,000 more fans to the game last night. The average price of a ticket is about $30, and according to the team marketing report, that's more than $735,000 in additional revenue, not to mention parking costs and more people riding Metro means more money. And the city of D.C. gets a big allowance from the 10% in taxes. It's exciting. It's new. It's something we haven't had here in a while. Until he proves himself over a season or a couple starts, I don't think it really matters. Strasburg just got another honor through food. Several restaurants came up with their own version of the Strasburger, like here at Capitol Hill's Tortilla Coast. It's two Chipotle honey glazed burgers, jack cheese, and fried onions for $11.37. Yep, no. Number 37. When oh, they really? first drafted Steven Strasburg, we knew that it was going to be big, so we were kind of building up to it, and uh, we've been thinking about it for a long time, and we finally got to put it into the mix yesterday. Oh, and the Nats team signed baseball is on the auction block. It's already going for more than $1,400, and there's still two days left in the online auction. Plus, real estate near Nats Park might ignite again. New condo buildings that have been empty are generating more interest. That's phenomenal. I mean, this, you know, it, it's good. I think it, it, it's a good for this for the city and for the team. I have to say that Strasburger pretty good. Had it for lunch today. I also want to mention even teams on the road are hoping to benefit from Strasburg's magic. The Cleveland Indians, uh, one of the teams that has the worst attendance in the league, is hoping that this magic will come home to them. Live from Nats Park, Natasha Barrett, ABC 7 News.